I talk about productivity and how I use all of this technology to balance not only running this YouTube channel, but also my day job as a project manager. Well, today let's go through what I consider to be the best, the essential free productivity apps on the market for your M1 Mac and how you can use them to maybe streamline your own processes. So what are they? Let's find out. I don't have to slam the laptop because we're talking software. I can't slam software, right? What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Hey, we've got a new microphone in here. Let me know in the comments below if you like it or not. They're starting to do some real construction right across the street, so we had to. We couldn't use what we were using, or you would hear construction all the time. So this is me trying to fix that, so you don't hopefully hear all of the construction noise. Before we get started down the list of apps, I think we need to make a very important first step. What is productivity? It's hard to recommend things when the term we are building off of is so nebulous and it, it probably means 10 different things to 10 different people. Dictionary.com defines it as the quality, state, or fact of being able to generate, create, enhance, or bring forth goods and services. Okay. That's pretty good dictionary.com. That's pretty close. I guess I would consider that to be pretty close to my personal definition. My definition, Gary's definition of productivity, getting work done. It's not about being fancy or spending more time and money playing around with the app or the software setting it up than you do actually getting work done. That's fine. That's fine. But I think there's a difference between those of us needing tools to assist us with our day job and those of us that just want to look cool and have fun playing around with fancy and neat databases that look really good in YouTube videos. That's, that's probably a spicy take, but such is life. Now that our definition is out of the way, here are those best apps that I use and the software to get all of that work done. Now today we have broken it down by functional area, so it should be a little easier to parse. I'm not just going to throw out a bunch of like rando pieces of software at you. Well, less random. It's not as random if they have groups, right? First up, and the thing that I do more than anything else, type and respond to email. The problem here, though, is if you work for a larger corporation, they probably already pre-installed an email client for you to use, like the dreaded Microsoft Outlook. Ooh, ooh, that's probably my least favorite piece of software ever made. If you are stuck with that, I'm sorry. Hopefully you get good at using it, I guess. But if you have a little more flexibility, I recommend the standard Mac OS email client. The thing about email is you really don't need all that many bells and whistles to get it right. What's most important is being able to sort it properly, assign priorities, take events and meetings from your email and place them on your calendar. And if you do want to be fancy, there are some of us do want to be fancy emailers. You can set up maybe a rule or two. Being able to quickly and efficiently process these tasks is the most important part and what email exists for like in a business setting. When it comes to email, it's more about you than it really is about the software, which is why I recommend and personally use the standard Mac OS client. You can have several accounts from basically every single email service directed straight to your Mac. Plus, even if you don't use a traditional service like Gmail, you can manually set up accounts too. The main reason I like to use this client is how easy it ties in with my preferred calendar, Surprise, it's the Mac OS calendar. You'll be seeing a lot of this going forward in the video. We're not yet to the scheduling section, but no matter what device you are on, iPhone, iPad, Mac, etc., all you have to do is click a meeting invite and it will automatically populate on your calendar with a quick little setup prompt that even allows for notifications, which as somebody that forgets about stuff a lot, I need notifications. That's seamless, baby. If you don't want to use this and want to keep it free, I would stick with the Gmail web client itself. It's pretty functional and you can do everything I mentioned. It just might take an extra step or two. Next up, let's talk note taking. When you're in those meetings, things can happen fast and actions and taskers fly around like lightning. No one likes to waste their time in meetings and the quickest way to waste people's time is to not track those actions or follow ups needed after bringing everybody together. I personally don't think meetings are wasteful unless we don't get anything done or figure out what we need to do next. So this one is pretty simple. The best free option here is to use the standard notes app on your Mac. It's quick to type. You can organize them based on whatever criteria you want and you can share those whole notes with your team. Like you can give your team access to those notes. I feel like this app gets poo pooed on quite a bit when we've got other options like Evernote, OneNote, etc. But again, it's not about playing with the software. It's about tracking meetings, converting that into actions, assigning those actions, and making sure your team knows who's supposed to do what. It doesn't need to be fancy. 
Case in point, what I would really recommend, but I can't necessarily because this is about software and apps, but I, what I really recommend is to just use paper like from a tree. Sure, this is supposed to be that free macOS productivity apps, but to this day, even though I'm surrounded, like I'm surrounded by heaps of technology every second of every day, I prefer to take notes on a traditional notebook and I convert those into digital tracked items later. It's just faster for me. Oh, things are happening, things are happening, things are happening. And then later when I can stop and parse what just happened, then we can start laying out the to-do list. The next one is where I feel that most time can be wasted, but conversely, it's probably the most important thing that you can do on a daily basis, and that's managing your calendar or giving the proper tools to whoever manages your calendar for you. We already mentioned it, but I do use the standard macOS calendar app. Much like notes, there are only a few things that a calendar really needs to get right. Obviously, it's got to schedule things. Good news, the Mac OS calendar will schedule things. But you'll need notifications, the ability to upload PowerPoints or other sorts of files to share with the attendees. You need to invite attendees to meetings and allow somebody to manage it for you. Yes, we all start off as the person managing our own calendar, but eventually you might have somebody helping you out with that. And the Mac calendar does all of that. You can very easily set up new events and send them to your team, give you reminders before an event and schedule down to the minute. Not 15 minutes like some apps, but honestly, meetings only ever seem to start at the top of the hour or at the 30 minute mark. I may just start scheduling meetings at 1023 just to throw people off because I can. None of those features are really all that special and any app can do most of those things. But what puts it over the edge for me is what we mentioned earlier. I can browse my email from my phone, get the invite, add it to my calendar. It instantly syncs with the team from any of our major devices. It's seamless. You can color code the types of calendars you've got. It's the thing that matters the most is pulling out friction. And that's why I've built out these app recommendations in the way that I have. So far, we have been all Apple all the time, and we won't stay there all day. Not all of this software is going to be the Apple version, but every bit of friction will slow a team down. And it seems like a small thing, but little things add up over time. And now, I said it, we're doing it. We're leaving the Apple walled garden. Next up in the things a professional needs to do on a daily basis is the one that I do so much. We talk about it in every single laptop video. Honestly, I don't like it all that much, but it is the most necessary word processing. For this, if you do really want to stay with Apple, you could use Pages, which is a totally fine word processor that's just about as powerful as Word, but it's free. How is that not a mic drop? Everything in here has been free, and it's just like... Who even pays for this stuff anymore? But for me, when it comes to word processing, there is a better option, and that's Google Docs. The reason I say Google Docs is because of how intertwined it is with Google Drive and the rest of the Google suite. More on Drive later. You can do absolute basics like type a YouTube script without needing to really get into charts or graphics or other formatting things. Like when I make these scripts, it's a pretty basic notepad type document. The cool part about Google Docs is saving documents and files is basically all about the cloud anymore. And being able to have a local file continuously update with a cloud backup that is instantly available to that ever present team. I, you know, I was going to say that that's amazing, but it's not amazing. That's just the requirement now. Plus, with that team access, you can all work on a document simultaneously. Let me tell you what is such an old school mentality that wastes so much time. So much time. Having a draft document that you email to somebody, you email it over, they review it, they make their comments, then they email it back to you, you fix them, you send it back, etc. This is a hamster wheel of death that might have made sense five or so years ago, but even free or very low price software like Google Docs means that everyone can work in a document at the same time and you can all see what each other is working on and what everyone is doing. It's so good, please. Please, if you still do the send documents around the world only to send them back, give this a try. This also saves you from version control issues where somebody made changes, but maybe you updated an older version at the same time without those changes, and now there are two separate documents floating around. That can be real embarrassing when it's time to brief the boss, and they've got a different sheet in front of them, and you have no idea what they actually have. But if you're going to share documents with a team and have meetings with that team, stick with me here, you probably have a team, right? I, mean, that makes, I think that's a pretty good leap of logic. The last year has kept a lot of us working from home and the web conferencing apps have blown up in response. There are a lot of options to choose from, but I'm going to lay out my favorite two, Microsoft Teams and FaceTime. Yes, 
FaceTime. First off, let's talk Microsoft Teams. While we've kind of been trashing on Microsoft software for most of the video, this one is actually pretty darn good. Not only does my eight-year-old use it for his virtual school, but I use it on a daily basis. My team started off with WebEx at the beginning of the pandemic, and while it's functional, Cisco WebEx is it's okay. I just really like how the actual app of Teams works. You can have video conferencing calls, you can share documents, you can schedule it, it has its own calendar, but sometimes that calendar can be wonky and it doesn't play well with others, so I personally wouldn't rely on it. You can do audio calls, chat rooms, set up individual teams, and if something needs to go from a quick consultation between two people to a full-on working group of like 10 or more, you can instantly do that. And if you have a larger presentation that you need to give to say thousands of people, there is a live option. I do believe that's a paid service though. The thing is, you can scale it up if you need to as your business grows. You start out by yourself in the free version, and as you add more members, you can get more and more features. I'm telling you. I say that because always double check and see if there are legit options out there because you don't need to buy all that fancy productivity stuff. Some of the I like to play with productivity software it's that crowd likes to sell. But if you do want to stick in the Apple ecosystem, you can do FaceTime calls with up to 32 individuals. Honestly, if I'm going to be doing a call larger than 32 people, it's got to be something special because trying to wrangle 32 people on a conference call can and will turn into a nightmare. How's it going to be like a year and a half since we all started working from home and people still don't know to mute when you're in a call? Come on, people. It's almost June of 2021. Mute your mics. Spreadsheets rule the world. Sometimes I prefer using them instead of a Word document if I need to build out a more detailed schedule or build some kind of an action tracker. If I had one dream in my professional life, it would be to become a spreadsheet wizard because we all know that one person. We all know the one person in the office who can make those sheets dance and it's always just magical to watch. My preferred options are Mac Numbers because of course, right? Numbers is actually my favorite of all the Excel clones out there and Google Sheets. I don't like Google Sheets as much, but the same rationale behind using Google Docs plays out here, instant sharing, team can edit on the fly together, etc. Pick which one you like. I mean, spreadsheets always end up being roughly the same thing in my very novice approach to using them. Again, I'm not a wizard. So long as you can add a few formulas and manipulate the columns as you see fit, go with that version of software. And last but certainly not least, we need to put all this stuff somewhere, right? That presentation due tomorrow does no good if it only lives on my MacBook Air. So let's talk cloud storage. Obviously, as I have an Apple slant, you can only use iCloud. Okay, I can't, I can't keep a straight face on that. I'll personally never use iCloud because of all the annoying notifications I get both on my phone and Mac and personal spite can be a huge reason not to do things. Here we are kind of breaking the free rule the rest of the video operated under, but I think it's for good reason. I wouldn't trust any valuable data to a fly-by-night rando website that offered me free storage, and the free version you can get on reputable websites generally is not enough storage. Yes, any website can be hacked, but odds are I'd rather go with Google Drive, Apple iCloud, or Dropbox for my actual valuable information. This assumes you don't already have a cloud-based or proprietary corporate server to access. I personally would go between Dropbox or Google Drive with me leaning more towards Google Drive. If you buy the whole business suite together, you can get so many more tools than just storage. And this way to, look, the Google suite is way too much for me to get into in this video, but look it up sometime. It's, it's crazy. I pay into it for running this video production thing. Dropbox is fine and some vendors prefer it, but I just like having Google Drive because of how much it seamlessly works with all of the other Google stuff we talked about earlier. And if you hadn't noticed, I like using systems. I talk about the Apple ecosystem. I talk about systems a lot. I don't like using single pieces of software where I can avoid them. Darn it, teams, you are just too good to not use. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Look, I wanted to make this video because there are a lot of productivity app videos out there trying to sell you overly complicated stuff. Then you know what? That overly complicated stuff might be needed for very specific use cases where huge teams are coordinating with other huge teams and there are like various levels where linkups happen or if you are designing complicated hardware or software, etc. But if you are doing that, you already have a system, you aren't looking for advice from a YouTube video. These are all free options that will let you schedule, manage, coordinate, and communicate with a team. And I use all of them on a daily basis. And I would highly encourage you to try them out too. You don't really lose, they're free. You don't lose anything if you don't actually like them. And if you like this video and you are looking for productivity stuff, here's a video that I made with all of my favorite productivity accessories for my MacBook Air. You can find it by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. 
Thanks for watching.